What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to walnut blast your N54 motor. So I know there's many other long comprehensive videos on doing a walnut blast video. I'm going to show you how to do this in six minutes. Six hours later. This is a really common problem for this motor because it's direct injection, doesn't have any injectors, cleaning off the carbon deposits on the back of the valves because, well, the fuel sprayed inside the cylinder. I'm doing this on the mega cheap, like many N54 owners, can't really quite afford the car. So I'm going to show you how to do it on the cheap too with all the little hacks I have for getting all the tools cobbled together to do this job on the mega cheap. Just as a brief overview, you the job what you have to do is take off the cowl take off your inlets and then take off the intake manifold you'll have to be comfortable with moving the motor around either with a wire tapping the starter or with a ratchet spinning the motor to close the intake valves and if you're not comfortable with that don't dive into the job if you want to have a shop do this job it's going to cost between 800 and a thousand dollars depending on where you go and who does it with that said let's dive into it cowl off. The next up is the air filters. I have some AFE air filters here, some connections down over here. If you've got the stock air box, it's just some clips and some 10 mils. Sorry, I don't have an example here. Next thing to do is to take out your charge pipe. Even an aftermarket one will have this BMW coupler. You pull out the pin and then slide it off the throttle body. You have an electrical connection here. Then mine just connects with this vibrant clamp here to the intercooler pipe down. I don't think you need to take it off all the way. At least it's not in the way now. Getting the charge pipe off is a bit more of a pain than I thought. See that little bolt there? If you have a little bolt like that in your aftermarket charge pipe, it's because it's a set screw. It indexes with the throttle body right there. Next, you gotta get off the throttle body. It's four 10 millimeters, two on the top here, two just like it on the bottom pointing up. Now you got the throttle body undone. You've got this like your throttle body sensor, but this one over here is like an EVAP something or it's idle sensor, but it's just like your brake booster one here where you pinch the side and pull it up. There we go. Yep. Pinch and slide it out. There's your throttle body. So I took the engine cover off, a couple five mil Allen heads. You should know that. Now you've just got these electrical bundles here. We just got to get them out of the way because we got to get access to the intake manifold bolts. We're going to get the T-MAP sensor here. Uh, this one's pretty obvious, but just tab up and pull out. Be careful not to snap the tab off. Be careful with your finger. Ta-da. All right. Now you got to get this black like wiring harness box off. You can see a big wiring harness comes in. It's kind of the junction for everything under the intake manifold. It comes off these metal tabs attached to the intake manifold. So you just have to push down on the metal tab or try and lift up on the plastic that's attached to the junction box and pull away. I've already got this one kind of disconnected a little bit on the left. Now I got to get the right. Oh, there we go. We're free. Now to get the intake manifold off, you need an 11 mil. Ideally, you have an 11 millimeter six-sided deep socket because the regular depth socket like this just cuts it. So pick up a deep. I thought I had one. I've already cracked them all loose. So we're just gonna back them off. They're most of them are studs with nuts, but you've got a bolt at the front. Now get your inlet pipe over here that goes around to the rear turbo out of the way. Get other things just tucked down. There is one vacuum line over here that goes to like a hose on the driver's side of the car. We can get that off in a sec. Oh, there we go. Oh, careful. There we go, manifold off. We're caught up on something little. This thing right here. Just attach the post, it's just a rubber mount. You should be able to slide it off, there we go. You got this right here, you can see it just goes away. Huzzah. There's only one eight mil bolt and an electrical connector that retains the fan shroud. All right, so we got the fan out. We got lots more room. I'll show you the 22 mil you're trying to reach. Inside the harmonic balancer here, you can see that large nut in the middle. That's when we want to spin. The motor spins clockwise when viewed from the front of the car. All right, with the car in neutral, and if you've got an automatic, it can be in park or neutral because it'll just spin the flex plate. I'm gonna look down cylinder two because that's the first one I want to do. We're gonna crank the motor over. I've got my 22 millimeter on the engine, and now I'm just looking down into the cylinder. And the intake valves push down when they open and they pull up when they shut. So they're still closed. They're starting to move now. So we can tell we're on the intake stroke for cylinder two. Gonna keep cranking. Oh, I see them starting to close. And they're closed. Gonna go just a little further. And we're good, we're gonna go right there. So cylinder two now is lined up at a point where the intake valves are shut. I'm going to tape off everything else around here so that we don't get any walnuts in there. I'm also going to bring in some blankets and cover this so that we don't get walnuts in the connectors because, man, it sprays a lot. Also, one note while you're doing this job, you do have a live 12-volt connection right here that's exposed on the back of your starter, so do not touch that with your ratchet or your brake cleaning bottle or anything like that. 
Highly recommend you disconnect the battery when doing this job. Now let me show you what the mega cheap setup looks like. I've rented a compressor from a local tool supply store for about $33 a day. Also came with this airline. I bought a portable abrasive blaster kit from Princess Auto. It's the Canadian version of Harbor Freight. I picked this up for $100, but it does go on sale, I've read, for $50. And if you're in the States, you can pick up a Harbor Freight blaster just like this one for $35 US. I got 50 pounds of crushed walnut shell. This is between like 18 and 40 grit, I think the ad said. The walnut was about 45. This is the gun that comes with the abrasive blast. And this is the extender tip that gets you into the port that I bought on FCP or I'll link it on the screen. The extendo tip was like $13 or something. Then I'm just using my home vacuum. It's just an industrial in-wall one. And I 3D printed the port match. I'll link this in the description to the STL file if you have a 3D printer or a friend that does. It's just a couple dollars in PLA filament and uh, it printed out in about an hour and it fits perfectly. It's the same tool that you'd pay on FCP Euro for 80 bucks, but printed it for basically free. What I found out works best is that if you get in there with a scraper and scrape up any loose carbon first, and then you're gonna vacuum that out, that's what I've done right now on this one. I'm just gonna vacuum out the schmutz right now. Blast air. Now that we've sucked up some of that loose debris that was just easily attainable, we're gonna put the vacuum head back in. I've got my walnut feed connected to the blaster. So get it on, get the vacuum on, start spraying walnuts. And first pass is usually pretty impressive. I find the walnuts really dries out the carbon. When you go in there at a first time and try and scrape and pull things up, the carbon's really wet and sticky and like it's saturated with oil. So when you blast the walnuts in there, it absorbs a lot of moisture and it makes it easier to scrape things up. So I'll get a shot of this where we're at right now and it looks a lot better. The first step always has the biggest improvement. I got in there and did some scraping. Now I'm just gonna get back in there with the vacuum and suck up what I scraped loose. Just after that short blast, it just kind of collected all the loose stuff. It makes it easier to get back in there with the walnut. Now we're going back in for more walnuts. That did a pretty good job, but we're still needing to get at the back of the valve, so I'm going to get in there and scrape it up. This right valve is what I consider to be final product. It looks really clean, nothing stuck around the seat. This left valve needed a little more work so I went in there again. The next five valves I just did off camera because it's rinse and repeat. With all the valves clean, it's time to put on your intake manifold. I've just cleaned it up, cleaned all the ports inside here as well as the tracks where the gasket goes. I've put in new gaskets, which I highly recommend you do because you don't want to get a boost leak. And now let's put it back on. Spent some time cleaning up the throttle body. It's all looking a lot better than it was when it came out. Now, putting it back in, you need to use a new gasket and it's just four 10 millimeter bolts that go around the perimeter. We got the cylinder head mating surface for the intake manifold all cleaned up now. Time to drop it in. It's definitely going to be easier to connect to this connection on the side with the throttle body hanging there. So before you push it on and tighten it down, put this on as well as it might be easy just to get the electrical plug done down here before it's all bolted in place. So we got everything attached and torqued down. The intake manifold to cylinder head bolts, the seven of them, is 11 foot-pounds. And then the four going throttle by to intake manifold is six foot-pounds. When installing your charge pipe, make sure the O-ring is seated in there and not torn or halfway out of the seat. You can see it right there. I can just move it back and forth. You also have to take this clip out to get this pipe in because this is the retaining clip. We got the charge pipe pushed on, latched in. We got the meth bung in and we got the charge pipe connected at the other end with our blow off valve piped in. Now it's a matter of putting in the intakes. I'm sure they replaced these, these are pretty crusty. Got the intakes on. I got my radiator fan just clipped in. I'm leaving it out because I'm doing a water pump after this so no point putting it back in. Just got it connected so we don't make the BMW mad. Time to fire it up. Here's hoping we don't have a bunch of walnuts in the cylinder. Well, that's a wrap on walnut blasting my N54. I hope this video helped you out. I hope it condensed all the information you need into one place with the right advice from someone you know that isn't an expert that can show you what it's like to go through doing this for the first time. If I had to recommend how long this job would take, I'd probably estimate about six hours at a minimum. Once I got going, it took about 30 minutes each port to clean, so it's at minimum probably two and a half to three hours to actually clean the ports, and then your time may vary for taking off the things around the intake manifold. I bet I could get the intake manifold, throttle body, and charge pipe off in like 45 minutes now, if, because I'm doing it a second time, but first time, it took me about an hour and a half poking my way through it, but putting it back together, just a lot of cleaning and 
patience. So as always, please smash like and subscribe button down below if this helped you out. Thanks for watching and have a good day.